Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about turnouts. What are the differences and what you should be looking out for? Let's have a look. So let's dive straight in. Here we have a Walters number five left hand turnout. Uh, what is the number five? Well, number five basically says something about the angle of the turnout and thus also the curvature that a turnout has. So number two turnout will go straight to the left. And if you would have a number five like this, it's more gradual. And they go all the way up to eight. I think even a 10 exists. Uh, but what does that also mean? Because it's really nice to have a gradual turnout. That also means your turnout is going to be very long. This one is about 10 inches. So if you would have a number 10 turnout, then it doesn't even fit here on my camera. It will go all the way up to 20 inches just for one turnout. So it's great for mainline running. But if you have a yard, you definitely want to stick to four, five, six range uh, turnouts to get something uh, done in a reasonable space. So let's have a look at the power routing. In a nutshell, everything is basically powered all the time, except for the frog. So you can see that here in the back as well. There are these jumpers that go from uh, the outer rail to the outer rail and the inner rail to the inner rail and the same here. And it's isolated throw bar, meaning that these two are not connected. How this is powered, this small piece of track here, the point rail is actually powered underneath as we saw. This turnout section here itself is powered by a rail joiner that's right there. Do you see the rail joiner is almost not even on this piece of track because it ends right there. This is not going to be a very secure connectivity there. And secondly, it, it will get power from the connection that it makes here. But this is, in my opinion, also not really a good electrical uh, connection. The turnout also is not powered. This turnout was made up out of several pieces of rail molded in a piece of plastic. And there's no real way to, to solder or anything on there and to get it powered. I'll show you later what happens if you try to do that. But furthermore, you've got your, your wood uh, details in, in the switch right here. It's quite a good switch. It's DCC ready. It will do the job. Now let's have a look at this Pico Streamline, number five as well. And it's a Electro Frog. Before we go into the Pico itself, you see it's a number five also. So the geometry should line up with the other number five. So if I just lay it on top, you'll see it matches very well, but yet you get more track with the Walters. So you might think, yay, that's great. I get more track for my money, but you also need to realize how are you going to use this? Because if you want to build a yard, you want to put these tracks as short as possible uh, onto each other. Then with the Walters, you're definitely going to want to uh, trim it off which is not ideal. And secondly, if you have two main lines and you want to go from one main line to the other main line with two Walters, I guess the spacing would be something around this if this would be a Walters as well. So if we just get our measurement device, then you'll see seven centimeters, almost three inches between the tracks. I guess maybe for modern uh, railroad time, that could be good. But for me, that's way, way too much. So I would trim this in uh, big time. If you get uh, two of these, Picos, put it as such, and you'll see the line from center distance of the bottom rail to the bottom rail is five centimeters, two inches. This is almost in line with the NMRA standards. I think NMRA like two and a half inches, so it would be somewhere here. So you will need a little spacer there if you want to comply to that. But for me, I find this a little bit over two inches uh, or five centimeters is a great distance because the trains are really close to each other and you can pack more trains onto your layout. Let's have a look at the Pico itself. So this is also a DCC ready turnout. Could apply the same rule of thumb that all the track is powered all the time, including the frog, as you will see in a, in a bit. They put some nice features in here. First off, it is a snap throw bar. So they put a little switch, a uh, little spring in here, sorry, uh, that will keep it nice and snug into place. This will help against derailment and give a little bit better connectivity right there. But I wouldn't trust that connectivity. Then the pivot point here, they made quite a nice special point there to have extra conductivity. And then we have the point rail that's from here to the frog. Uh, these are connected through the rails here, through these jumpers, uh, all the way to the frog. So the frog actually is from this point here all the way to here, or you could even say all the way to the end of this turnout here. 
So it's quite a long section of track that will switch polarity. That also means that you need to isolate your uh, rail joiners right there, otherwise you're gonna have a short. There is a wire attached here, straight from the factory, which is great. Add a frog juicer to this section of track, or add it to your uh, switching mechanism to get the polarity of the track correct, and to give connectivity, a hard line connectivity, all the way to this track. So what I do with these, uh, first off, I connect a wire, see here, green, uh, to the frog. So my frog is powered and then I cut these jumpers right there. So my frog length is now only this. It's the shortest possible frog length you can have with this turnout. But then how do you get connectivity to this section? Well, they have here you can add a, a jumper, add it two jumpers. Because as you see with the factory turnout, they made a provision there so you can add uh, two jumpers. So that's what I did. These two jumpers will allow for this whole section of track and this whole section of track to always be powered, which is great as well. It is quite a lot of work, I must say, and you can hide these jumper wires once you install them, you paint them, and they'll blend in and nicely, you won't see it. So you could ask, what's the big deal? Why would you do this? Well, the big advantage is that uh, this track here, this turnout point, has the same polarity as the track here neighboring it. So if you would look at it in this view, and for some reason you would have thicker wheels or wheels out of gauge, then you won't have a short from the wheel going into this turnout point because it's all in the same polarity. But if you don't do that, then you'll see that said, this is the one I didn't modify, this whole middle section switches, including uh, this track. So in this setting, if this is the plus, this track will be plus as well. But this track right here is minus. So if your wheel is just a little bit out of gauge, or if you have older wheels that are a bit thicker, then you would have a short. And you don't want to have shorts on your turnouts or your layout at all for that matter. So that's one advantage of modifying your switches uh, as I did such. Now, this is the Electrofrog. Pico is coming out with a Unifrog. Unifrog is basically a marriage of these two uh, switches. Um, so you don't have to do all the soldering and jumping. You just buy it straight out of the store, I believe almost in this format, and it still comes with a wire to connect the, uh, the frog itself. So that's gonna be great. I'm really looking forward to installing Unifrogs on my uh, future layout. So before we look at some other switches, let's have a little intermezzo. Here we have two crossovers. So one thing in real life, here you have a wheel, and this is the flange of the wheel, this bottom piece. The train in real life never really rides on this flange. The purpose of the flange is to keep the wheels into the track, in the middle of the track. But in model trains, it doesn't really work like that because you can't scale everything down prototypically. So you would see if you have a crossover here that the wheel would just sit on the rails here and actually where it gets critical here, you see there's a bump, this bump section in the middle. So the flange of the wheel actually is lifted up, drives over this section and then is put back down onto the rails here again. And then as it moves along on this crossover, you see the same thing. So the flange goes onto this bump and then the bump finishes and the flange, uh, the wheel is rested onto the track again. It's the same with the turnout. You have the same thing here uh, as well in this section. This is important to note because as we look at some other turnouts where I did some soldering, you don't want to mess up this uh, plastic piece here in the middle because your flange of your truck actually will drive onto that. So back to the crossover, it's the same story. These frogs, uh, one, two, three, four, I don't know if they're called frogs, we'll just call them frogs for now, are plastic. So these are not powered. So especially if your crossovers get a bit longer, these frogs will get longer as well. So this is something to look at when you uh, select these. I think Pico also has a line that has frogs that are powered. I don't know about the other brands. This is an Atlas. So now back to the turnouts. So next up is Atlas. This is one of their sectional track switches. So this is not an Atlas custom switch. As with the other ones, uh, the switch is powered throughout, except for the frog. The frog is plastic, so you can't power that at all. Furthermore, this joint here, I just don't like the way it looks. And everything, just the overall quality seems to be a bit rougher around the edges than here the Pico. I just hold it next to it. Not a big difference, but it's just more defined on the Pico than, than here on the uh, the Atlas one. Also, I've had troubles here with the turnout uh, meets the rails. I think it's partially because of this uh, switching unit that I came with. It, it's just a bit, yeah, I don't know, I don't want to say flimsy, but you get the point. Uh, and also, I don't really like the look of this. You could get rid of this and just put one of the other hand throws 
So here is another turnout by Walters. It's a, I think, a number two uh, Y turnout. So you see it's very sharp. The angle is much uh, larger. These are great small units for uh, switching areas or industrial tracks. But you gotta watch out with even a four axle diesel might have trouble with these. So here I soldered this wire to the frog. It's not nicely done. The plastic started to melt. So the train runs a bit wobbly over this area. I mean, it does work. It's just a bit wobbly. One last turnout I want to show you is this curved turnout by Walters as well. These curved turnouts can save a lot of space, uh, despite that they're quite long, this one foot. So if you start a turnout in the curvature, you can get way more other turnouts following it before you hit the straight, if that makes any sense. Again here, the plastic in the middle on the frog. I did manage to solder onto this one without messing that up too much. One detail I want to point out is just how they made this with these, these metal lips. Doesn't really look that nice in my opinion, but it does work. There's no spring in here, so you do really need some kind of turnout mechanism to operate the switch. That's where the picos, see up here, you don't necessarily need a turnout mechanism. You can just switch them like this, and some people even switch them on the tracks like that. Back to the workbench. Last thing I want to point out is the detailing on these uh, turnouts. As you see here, the spikes on the Pico are just a little bit more accurate than on the Walters. And also the grain in the wood is more defined in the Pico than on the Walters. I think if you would uh, prime this with some uh, spray can, not much will be uh, left of it. One turnout missing is microengineering. I have one, but I don't know where it is. It is by far the most detailed turnout. It's better than these two combined, the most accurate. That said, it is a very delicate turnout. I pulled off one of the uh, tracks from the ties just handling it and testing it. So I, I don't really want to use those. They're too, too expensive to be that fragile. So just to show you an overview of all the different track, here on the left, you see the brands, Atlas, Pico, Microengineering, and Walters. And on the top, you see the different variants, everything from uh, small to number four, to number six, eight, and number 10, and crossings. Uh, yes, one or two might be missing. It's not 100% complete, but it does give you a general overview of, of what you're looking at. I mean, the conclusions are Walters has a lot of variants and different types. Uh, Atlas has also quite a few, especially a lot of crossings. Pico is a very narrow um, assortment and, and microengineering only has a few. Secondly, I also looked at the availability. So I just went to the uh, walters.com website and most of the turnouts are actually not available or are in back order. So conclusion here, if you are planning your layout and at some point you know what kind of switches you want, especially if you want some special switches like the curved ones, start ordering them because uh, it might take a while before you get them. To put everything together and start to draw some conclusions, uh, I started to compare them. Again, this is just my opinion and I'm sure a lot of people are not going to agree with this. I'm sure I'll, and there, I'm missing out maybe some details here and there, but in broad strokes, this is what I came to. Uh, we look at the four major brands and compare them on detail, durability, the electrical options and connectivity, and the assortment that is available in code 83, I, I might add. This would be the conclusion. One column I deliberately did not add is the price column. Uh, in my thinking, I'd rather go uh, quality over quantity, being able to operate smoothly and without problems, trouble free, is a big uh, deal in my mind. So my recommendation is um, go for the Pico where you can and go for Walters where you must. And why do I say that? Because Walters has a larger catalog of turnouts. They have curved turnouts, they have much tighter switches if you if you want that, and they have far larger switches as well if you would like that. But for your go-to number five, six, for me it's Pico, Electro Frog, or the new Unifrog any day of the week. So that was it for today. If you have any more questions, uh, please let me know and I'll answer them in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you want to see more reviews just like this. Thank you very much.